This week passed without my participation in debate or questions. It almost went by without me reaching London due to the storms, and luckily I avoided being stuck at York, eventually arriving too late to take part in the living with Covid statement. My colleague, Philippa Whitford, pretty much summed it up in her contribution. With 38,000 new Covid cases today, can the Prime Minister explain which public health experts advised abandoning testing and isolation, and when will that advice be published? Yes, uh, I thank her very much. And ca- as you know, cases are, are falling, hospitalisations, hospitalisations are, are falling, and and the, and the number of excess deaths uh, from Omicron is in, is in is actually in in negative uh, territory. And uh, we consult a wide range of scientific opinion, including uh, in, including Sage and, and clearly uh, CSA and CMO. Uh, but the decisions are for are for ministers and we take them. The bottom line is there isn't any medical advice for the UK position. The reality of living with Covid is that people will die and without free testing, the health experts will be operating blind. Socially, the Tories are effectively creating a two-tier system where those who can afford to pay for testing and to self-isolate can do so, while everyone else is forced to gamble on the health of themselves and others. Thankfully, Scotland is continuing with a more sensible and precautionary approach. Once again, though, our decisions are being dictated by the economic decisions made by England. For Scotland to continue with free tests, it will need to find the money from elsewhere in the budget, emphasising why we need the full fiscal levers of independence. The other big story of the week is the deteriorating situation in Ukraine, now with Russian military intervention having begun. Where this will end is unknown, but more needs to be done on sanctions. As always, Johnson is the wrong man in the wrong job at the wrong time. We know he personally intervened to suppress the Russia report into Russian influence in British democracy. He knighted the son of a KGB agent and grants dubious Russian individuals and party donors peerages in the House of Lords. And a quarter of Johnson's cabinet have taken Russian-linked cash since he became Prime Minister and the Conservative Party is part funded by Russian individuals. The Centre for American Progress, a US think tank which is close to the President, warned about the UK Tory party's Kremlin-linked oligarchs challenge. A leading American think tank has publicly raised concerns, and I quote, about the close ties between Russian money and the United Kingdom's ruling Conservative Party are a block to stronger sanctions. How can our allies trust this Prime Minister to clean up dirty Russian money in the UK when he won't even clean up his own political party. Meanwhile, at home, the local elections on the 5th of May draw closer. You have until the 18th of April to get registered to vote and the 19th to apply for a postal vote. And as always, if you would like an advice surgery appointment, please get in touch by email martin.day.mp at parliament.uk or call me on 01506 654415. With the return to more hybrid working, I'm again offering physical appointment. And until next week, stay safe.